Hey, what's up everyone? I'm performing a fuel pressure check on a BMW E36 with an M50 motor in it today. And here's the tools I'll use to test it with. I have a basic fuel injection pressure tester, which is rated at 100 PSI, which is pretty standard. Although we'll only see around 50 PSI today, as these M50 motors came with a 3.5 bar fuel pressure regulator which is usually located on the back of the fuel rail over here. And it should have a vacuum line coming off it going into the intake somewhere. On this E36, the fuel pressure regulator is located underneath the car situated by the driver's seat. And it's in what's called a 3 to 2 control valve, which recirculates unused fuel back to the tank so it's not traveling through the fuel rail all the time which heats up the fuel and causes more emissions so basically in a nutshell it's like a returnless fuel system so if you're testing a four cylinder version you guys have a three bar regulator so you'll see the 40 pound range now this tester came with a share rater valve adapter. This guy threads into what looks like a bicycle tire valve stem and it's usually located on the fuel rail either in the front or on top and you would take your adapter thread it in and then hook up your tester to it. At that time you could either start the car and monitor your pressure or bypass the fuel pump relay and turn the pump on and read your pressure that way and it's really super clean and easy to hook up but unfortunately on this E36 there's no test port so we need to use a T adapter like this guy and the tester threads on to this part and then you just run the T connector in line with the fuel line so what we'll have to do is pull the back seat up and get to the pump and tap into the fuel line over there to get a reading off it. So if you're using the T and you don't have a test port, you will need at least 18 to 24 inches of um, fuel line hose. This one here is 8 millimeter inner diameter by 13 outer and you can pick this up at the dealer they sell it by the meter though. You could use 5 16 hose as well if you want to run with that. But at least, you know, a couple feet. Also, you might need a new hose clamp or at least a couple. These are 10 16 millimeter, which fit the hose just fine. You may run in to the factory hose clamps that BMW used on the fuel lines they only thread in one direction so they're not really reusable I also have some hose line pinch pliers to check the pump pressure and check for any bleed down also I have a voltmeter to check the pump power and the last thing we have is a length of wire with two male connectors on either end and th this is about I don't know 12 13 inches you don't need this much six inches will work just fine and what we'll use this for is to bypass the fuel pump relay and activate the pump and that's pretty much it so we'll bleed down the system to get the fuel pressure out and then we'll locate the pump and run some tests on it and maybe do some troubleshooting too. All right. Okay, so the first thing that I'll do is depressurize the fuel system so I don't have high pressure fuel spraying out when I disconnect the fuel lines. And like I said earlier, if you have a Schurator valve on your fuel system, then you can safely tap into it 
and read your pressure without performing this procedure here. So let's head over to the fuse box and relay box in one. Remove the top cover. And we want to go after this little box here. Flip this right off. So this houses the fuel pump relay, the main relay, and the oxygen sensor heater relay. You may only see two on your car, and it, the, the fuel pump relay is always on the left. So if you come across a no-start situation and you think it's fuel related, first check your fuse here, fuse 18, which is the third fuse from right to left. Make sure it's not blown. If it's not blown, what you can do is try the horn relay in place of the fuel pump relay or you can use the rear defogger relay and try one of these two relays to see if the car starts with that. Uh, just keep in mind that the main relay also plays a role in the fuel pump relay so you know if you have a bad main relay then the fuel pump relay is not going to turn on so you might want to keep that in mind. So what we want to do is grab this little nifty puller here if you still have it and remove the fuel pump relay pull straight up that's pretty much it next what you want to do is start the car let it run until it dies and then continue cranking for another at least five seconds to relieve the fuel pressure. Now I have a push button starter with me so I don't have to leave you guys right now. So I'll fire it up and let it die then keep cranking. And that's it. So the system should be safe to tap into. So we'll move on to the pump location and take it from there. Okay, so the fill pump is located underneath this back seat here. So it has to be removed completely. And to get it out, it's pretty simple. There's a couple of snap-in locks on either side of this bench seat. So just grab the front of it and lift straight up. And you'll hear it snap when it's freed. And at that point, you can just lift it up and remove it from the vehicle. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so you're looking at the passenger side of where the bench seat was located and the fuel pump is underneath this insulation and it's really easy to get to. So I'm just going to peel back this carpet here and then fold this insulation back. And what we have to do is remove these four screws. Okay, at that point, slip the cover off, and you want to feed this wire through and get this cover as far back as you can out of your way, and then just take the gasket and throw it on top, and that's pretty much it.
So next we'll move on to testing the pump and then we'll take it from there. Okay, so I just depressurized the fuel system. And the first thing I did after that was remove the fuel cap to relieve any internal pressure inside the tank. Also, I have a rag here to catch any spilt fuel. Also, I have some safety glasses. You never know. And also, I have really good ventilation right now because there will be some fuel to deal with. So that's something to keep in mind. So to start off with, we have to remove this fuel line here, which is the feed line. And it's under high pressure when the pump's on. This guy over here would, would be the transfer uh, suction line. In 95, they got rid of the line that went here and they have actually ran it inside the tank. So you may have a line coming to this area and you also might have a white colored pump. But basically, that's just the transfer tube that balances both tanks out. The actual fuel return is on the other side of the tank. Here's a other pump that I have for comparison if I can show it to you see this would have been this is a blue top that has the return for the um, suction pump but as you can see it has no ridges on it so you can put a hose over this so it's very easy to get confused when you're buying pumps just because the blue top doesn't mean um, that it's blocked off like this one. This one has ribs on it and it's also blocked off inside. So, if, you know, if you threw this pump in, you would have a fuel leak. You know, when you hit a corner, most likely on left turns, you'd probably have fuel coming out of this. So, I just want to clear that up what this guy is for. So what I'll do first is remove these plugs here because they're kind of in my way. And for reference, the black one is the fuel pump power. The white one is the uh, fuel sender. There's also another fuel sender on the other side of the car and they work together to give you a fuel reading. So I'm going to remove this hose clamp with a 5 millimeter socket. And I'm going to save this clamp because I'm going to reuse it. Have a little fuel coming out. So next, you want to remove the hose, and I have a hook here to remove it with, but you can use a flathead, <coughs> excuse me, flathead screwdriver as long as you're pulling from the outside of the hose. You don't want to dig in with a flathead, it can cut it. Quite a bit of fuel came out. And what you want to do, take your T connector and plug it straight in. Just got to want to angle it a little bit. Something like that. 
and tighten this guy up. And you want to take the other end of your hose and snake it around. And that's where the extra length comes in handy. And snake it around and plug it right into the pump. Tighten this guy up. Then you can take your pressure gauge and thread this guy right on. And there you have it. That's pretty much it for hooking it up. So uh, next I'll rehook or insert the plugs back and then we'll go back over to the fuel pump relay location and go over that area. Okay so I have my fuel pressure gauge rigged up inside the car so now what I would do is bridge a connection at the fuel pump relay location to activate it. But first I just want to go over some of these relay connections in case you want to do your own troubleshooting. So what we have here is terminal 30 which by the way I'm going off the bottom of the relay numbers. I don't know if you can see that. So that's what I'm referring to right now. So we have terminal 30, which is battery plus and it's hot at all times. And this terminal over here is terminal 87, which is the positive lead to the fuel pump. Up here we have terminal 86, which is key on power only and it gets its power from the main, main relay. So if you don't see power here, then you need to find out why the main relay is not sending it. This guy over here is terminal 85, and that's a ground signal from the computer. And if you don't have a ground signal here while the engine's cranking, it, then most likely it's a crank position sensor not sending a signal to the ECU um, because it needs at least 100 or 150 RPM of cranking speed to activate the relays over here. So that's pretty much it, you know, for the terminals. So at this time, what I need to do is tap in with my wire and bridge a connection and one thing to keep in mind is when you tap in the terminal 30 which is hot at all times you don't want the other end of the wire to touch any chassis ground so to turn the pump on you bridge 30 and 87 together just like this and that's how it should look so your pump would be on at this point. So right now I'm going to go mount the camera inside the car and we'll monitor the fuel pressure from there.